the biggest part of my success was really tying my whole life into my brain. It never felt like work to me. And I remember being so tired and I would be up late at night on my computer and I'm like, I ain't going to sleep until I'm done because I want this as bad as I want to breathe. Yeah. And that was just like my motto, like that, that resonated with me so much. So, mm -hmm. but when I got on Instagram and I saw these women, when they were posting it like, oh, I got my house or I got this. I'm like, oh, she did it, I can do it too. It has to work or it has to work. So I started out the trunk of my car. I started with two sweatshirts. I wore one and I sold the other one and I would just constantly just flip and flip and flip. And I would drive around the tri-state area selling shirts out of the trunk of my car. Yeah, crazy. And I mean, you make it sound so simple and it just blew up. What, what do you think were, and I, I feel like I'm going fast in this, but what do you think was some elements to really just making it go so hard? Because I mean, I had a brand and I didn't build it to that. Did you know in that very moment when you were starting that you were actually going to build this huge fashion empire? Like, was that a thought when you started or when did the idea of, yo, I'm really building something crazy come into play? So I always knew that I wanted to have a, a clothing brand. I knew yeah. that I wanted to have a full line of different items, but I had to start small. And I had to start with what I could afford. So I started with sweatshirts because it was the winter time. I didn't think about like the full bigger picture. Like I am the type of person that like if I set a goal, I don't set like a five year goal. I typically like if I can do it in five years, I can do it in one. I set like things that I felt as though they were attainable. And I just worked hard. And I think the biggest part of my success was really tying my whole life into my brand. Mm. So I like made everything that I genuinely love and that I, I would just do. I tied it into my line of I love giving motivation. So I on my app, we give out motivation every morning. I love sharing dating and love and fashion advice. On my app, we do that. So I like having fashion shows. I like creating experiences and entertaining people. Like So the things that I do in Milano de Rouge is not really typical for a clothing brand. But I tied in every aspect what of me. What you mean not typical? What you, when you so say like, that, give when me you think of when you think of have so when you think of fashion shows, right? Yeah. A fashion show typically is fifteen minutes. You show the collection and then you're done. Yeah. My fashion shows would be about three hours. We have an it's like a full it's entertainment. Experience. It's an experience. Yeah. Like we have a poet. We have dancers. We have. It was never just about the fashion, you know. It was about the experience and just bringing people together. Like it's showing our culture. Yeah. Um. So I tied in everything I genuinely love into my brand and it never felt like work to me. It just was like something that I was doing out of passion. I never put like a monetary goal to my brand. So I just worked hard and as I was growing and, and the the money was growing, I was happy and I was so thankful, but it wasn't my, it wasn't like, oh, I, I got to make this amount of money, you know? Yeah. It was just more so like, you I want to make this and I want to make this impact. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your attention to detail, crazy. I remember when I was uh, talking to Stryker, like, yo, I'm doing the music for it. It's like, you don't miss it. Like every, you, you take attention to detail with your denim. I know you didn't come right out with the denim because you might've took a year perfecting the denim. Yeah. Why is that important for our entrepreneurs just getting started to not take, you don't take shortcuts with anything that you do that I see. So for my entrepreneur getting starter in business, why is that important? And, and how, how did you even develop that when a lot of us are at a level where, well, I don't know, I, if I, I got to rush and put this out because I need the money. Like, what a, talk to that entrepreneur at that level where it's like, I might can't work on perfecting this thing. I just, my slogan my whole time been commit first, figure out the rest later. So I'll just throw some stuff out there and see if something hit, but. When I first started, that's that's how I did. Got it. So like the quality of Milano de Rouge when I first started, it was just like a regular t-shirt type Next of quality. Next level in Gildan. Next yeah, level in yeah. Gildan, yes sir. In H and M. But um, yeah. So when I first started, it was like, all right, let me just get this right. But once I had this thing that was working and that I was selling, everything else that I was building, I was trying to build quality. Yeah. So like I didn't have to put it out there, you know. So when I first my first cut and sew piece was a jumpsuit. When they first did it, the mold and the model was good, but the quality wasn't. So, okay, I got that, but I'm not about to put this out there. Let me get the quality. Let me continue to, to perfect the quality. And I would wear the items first, even now, like, like everything that we yeah. got, like, I make I sure I new wear new it. <laughs> I make sure I wear, I make sure I test the quality. Like we have baby clothing. I'm so big on quality for my son. I buy him nice, luxurious clothing. I make nice, luxurious clothing. Whatever 
I, I wouldn't make anything that I don't see us wearing. Right. So he was testing all of my products before we would put it on the market. And that's why he's paid. He's he's on payroll because good, good, he's our fit model. Good, yeah. Good. And that's a tax play too. Yes. Yeah. It's a tax play. It's tax free for him and it's tax deductible for me. Exactly. Yeah. People don't know. Don't yes. don't let that go over your head, y'all. Yeah. So a lot of people be like, because I know you can deduct, I want to say eleven thousand or twelve thousand yeah, a year mm -hmm. for your kids, but a lot of people always say, Well, my kid is one, two, three. What can they do? They can model. Yeah. In addition, they can model. You they can, can make promo. them a story. Yeah. Yeah. Put them, make them a book. Like, right. like my kids, they they gonna model for Milano. Yeah, too, for sure. So. I think they would be so cute yeah. to do for Milano. But but put them in the story. Like, there's so many plays that I believe is important. Like, I, I trademark all my kids' names. Yeah. Like, I'm making sure that they're gonna get licensing deals. Right. Like, I, I'm not playing around right. with that. Right. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. So it was important. I heard multiple times that you didn't have a mentor. I know when your son came, that was another battery in your back. But before we get to that, like what was driving you or how were you how were you learning about becoming better? Like I got better by having mentors, having coaches. Right. I believe kind of like you said, once you see it, you can't unsee it. So a lot of times I'm seeing successful people it made me become and want that more. But what driv drove you to success for those years when you didn't you didn't have no mentor, no guidance, no coach? What how were you able to create that success in those few years when you started without no coach two things or mentor two things so i had created mentors in my head mm. so you were a mentor in my head eric thomas was a mentor in my head i remember watching that one video when he was like you want success you got to want it as bad that as you want to breathe, breathe yeah. and i remember being so tired and i would be up late at night on my computer and i'm like i ain't going to sleep until i'm done because i want this as bad as i want to breathe, breathe yeah. and that was just like my model like that yeah. that resonated with me so much so Having mentors in my head, Oprah, my mentor in my head, Beyonce, I have different mentors because I'm multifaceted. Like, I'm not just in one area. So everybody I like, I'm inspired by. I'm either inspired by like, I don't want to be like them or I'm inspired to do more of what they just did. And another thing was me being on Instagram. And me being on Instagram, I like really control my timeline. I control who I want to see, but I followed a lot of girl bosses. And I remember like following Karen Civil, Ming Lee, mm -hmm. um, Ms. Bling. been doing it for a minute. Yeah, yeah. Miss Bling. And just seeing like, like these ladies had successes on, on behalf of themselves, like not on behalf of men. Yeah. And growing up where I grew up at, a lot of times I saw successful women. The most successful woman that I saw that had the luxuries, it was on behalf of a man. Mm. So as soon as he left, she no longer had that lifestyle. Yeah. She had the nice car, the Chanel bag. It was all on behalf of a man. Mm. But when I got on Instagram and I saw these women, when they were posting it like, oh, I got my house or I got this. I'm like, oh, she did it. I can do it too. Because mm -hmm. once you see it, you can't unsee it. Yeah. So they were like my mentors in my head. And yeah. that motivated me like, all right, there's no limit to how far I can go, you know? And now they homies. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's powerful. Yeah. Right 